Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to the service this morning. And special welcome to our television audience. This is Golson Church. We're located four miles south of Erskine, Minnesota, on Highway 59, and one half mile east on County Road 206. We're going to start out this morning with a uh, song of Sweet, Sweet Spirit of the Lord. And Father passed away 
And so, uh, it was Wednesday. So we want to pray for them, sir. All right. And I have a blessing. Yeah. My brother talked to a different doctor and he took a CT scan and the growth on his kidney has shrunk. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning that you are the one who answers. We thank you, Lord, for Bob's brother that that tumor is shrinking. And God, we just pray that you would just bring it down to nothing. And Lord, that you would be his healer. And God, we just pray that he will see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Open his heart. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for these two now, this friend of Susan's and their on too. Lord, we just pray that you would just just take this, kill that COVID virus that's in that, in that friend. And our Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would just, just open up the lungs again, both of them. Lord, that you would just take away the pneumonia, and, and Lord God, that you would be their healer. Thank you, Jesus, that you can do all things. Father, we pray this morning that you would continue to be with my brother Donnie, that you would just touch him today. God, you are the one who can raise anyone up and be the healer. And we just lift him up to you today. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Robbie and his family as they're on the way east uh, today, Lord. God, be their comfort and their strength. And be their protection as they go. And Lord, as they make their journey, we pray that even there, that they will have a, a positive, an opportunity to tell Jesus of Jesus Christ. God, just work in a mighty way and bring them back home safely again. God, we pray that you would just bless our nation. God, you know all the things going on today. And Lord, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And God, there's just so many things going on that the truth needs to come out. And Lord, we ask that you would bring it out the true, the real truth, and that America can be free. Lord Jesus, we just pray for a move of God in our land. We think of all those who have given their lives for America. And Lord, now today, so many of these things are at risk of being lost. God, we pray that you would just save this nation. But not only physically, but Lord, we pray that there will be a great revival. That we may once again truly be a nation under God. And so, Lord, cause your word to go forth and your spirit to move upon the souls of men. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask now your blessing upon our service today. Glorify your name. And all that is said and done, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, we have, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is so cometh as a thief in the night. But when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman or child. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. 
Ye are the children of, of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not pointed, appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we'll go on here. You know, God is in a life-changing business, isn't he? Amen. And, uh, you know... Gotta do it in the same key. He doesn't like key of F. Changing me. 
And that's what he's doing. All right. From glory to glory, he's changing me, changing me, he's changing me. His likeness and image to perfect in me, the love of God shown to the world. Singing glory, hallelujah. 
But Lord, you are God. You are the one, Lord, that we can trust you in all things. Lord, you are the keeper of the heart. And Lord, we just praise you this morning that you're in our midst. And Lord, as we turn our eyes to you, Lord, we're going to see great and mighty things. And Lord, we just pray that you would magnify your name in our midst today. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, uh-huh. 
Jesus, we might shine. sharp and uh, 
When she came running, Cassandra jumped up and put her arms around my neck, and next thing I knew, she climbed clean up on my shoulders, and all she would say was, up, up, up. <laughs> and you know, that's kind of, she didn't want to get scratched. And so I had to stand up and hold her high enough to where the dog couldn't touch it. But she was confident that I would do that. That's faith. The disciples knew that they needed someone to lift them up, up, up. And so they were, were desperate when they went to the upper room in Jerusalem, trusting in the promises. And you know, the promises don't mean anything until we need them. There's a kid's song, every promise in the book is mine. I can't remember the rest of it. But every promise in the book is mine, but they don't mean anything until we need them. The time you need to believe the word that says, I am the Lord thy God who healeth thee is when either you or a loved one is sick. Then that verse means very much a lot to you. The time when you need to, to believe and you do that verse that says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus is when you're not to the end of the month and your bank account has run out. That's the time you need those verses. And we can go on and on and on through the scriptures. And the time when the word becomes so real to you that you reach out and you grab onto it is when there's fear because you know that unless God does something, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. And that's what brings us to revival. It's when we look around us and we see things happening that we are not in control of and we need someone a whole lot bigger than us to pick us up and to carry us. That's why we need the Holy Spirit today just like we, the disciples needed them back then. You know, we all like the first three verses of this scripture, but we get to the fourth one, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And you know, I've heard so many people say, well, that was just for the disciples. That was for the days of the apostles, and, and after that, it's not in force, it's not real anymore. But the Bible does not say that. It does not put a timeline on that. He gave to the church the gift of speaking in tongues. And I, I've heard people say, well, this is the evidence of the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit if you can speak in tongues. There is a greater evidence to the baptism of the Holy Spirit than speaking in tongues. And that is this, the Holy Spirit comes to make you whole. The Holy Spirit comes to make you whole. You know, we have heard the example many times, I've used this many times, of the refining of gold. When gold is being refined, it is put over fire. And the fire gets hotter and hotter until it turns the, the gold into, into uh, a, a liquid. But it's not enough just to get it into a liquid state. It has to be brought so hot that all the impurities begin to come to the surface of the gold. And once it, it comes to the top, then they can scrape off all the impurities and what you have left is pure gold. And it's no wonder that the first thing that happened when the, when the Holy Spirit came here, it says, there appeared unto them, unto them like tongues of fire. The tongues of fire are a purifying thing 
that purifies the mind, that purifies the heart, so that we can become whole. You see, gold that is not purified isn't worth much. But you get it pure, and now you've got something that's worth a lot. And a, a refiner isn't doing his job if he just gets it to where it's hot and he can pour it into a mold and make it into a right mold. He hasn't done his job until he has been patient enough to let the fire burn until the job is done. And I've been hearing people say, well, why hasn't God straightened out the mess that our country's in? Why is it it's still so bad? Why is it still so hard? We're talking about inflation going up and talking about this, talking about that, and it's getting worse and worse. What is going on? I believe what God is doing, God's number one goal in this country today is revival. And revival comes when the fire gets hot. And there, there's still too much that has to get burned out. And so the fire keeps getting hotter and hotter and it's not a comfortable situation. We look at your life, you look at the things you go through. How many times have there been tears? How many times have there been things going on in your life and you say, God, where are you? The fire of God's cleansing power is still at work. And God is not going to quit working before the job is done. Because the Bible tells us he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. It does not say he's coming for a bride that looks pretty decent. He's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And therefore, he's not going to quit working until the job is complete. But when the job is done, praise God, the wedding is about to start. And so when that fire gets hot and you're getting uncomfortable and, and there's tears and there's fears and all these things, there is something to rejoice at in all this that God is getting you, he's getting your loved ones ready for the day of Jesus Christ. Now you may be walking with God, but maybe your family are not. Maybe there's loved ones there that you've been praying for and praying for, but you're still going through the fire with them. God is not done, and he's not given up. So continue to rejoice in the love of God, knowing that God has not given up on your family. He's not given up on your loved ones. So in the midst of the fire that's burning, you can rejoice that God's still working. And he's not done yet. That's where long-suffering comes in. You know, one of the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. And how do you define this, the, the term long-suffering? Just suffering a long time? Well, in a sense, it is. But it's patience while going through the fire. It is patience in staying there until the job is done, having faith to believe that the God who we serve has everything under his control and he knows exactly what you can do. He knows exactly what you can, control, can, can put up with because he knows you. And so he allows the fires to burn because it's the end result he's concerned about. We would like to jump out of the fire and get where it's nice and cool. We run for the air conditioner. But God says we're not done yet. There is a cleansing going on in America today. And I rejoice in some of the comments I receive, even on Facebook. 
of people who not too long ago had no interest in God whatsoever, today are talking Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. That's encouraging to me. Amen. Would they be talking Jesus if they hadn't faced hard things? Probably not. This whole situation in America and around the world today is driving people to their knees because God knows that if we do not have a clean heart, how can we stand in a clean heaven? So God is at work. He comes to make us whole. The Bible tells us that Jesus went up to various people and he said to them, you know, do you want to be healed? They said, yes. And Jesus it says, he laid his hands on them, he prayed for them, and they were made whole. It's not just the healing of the body God is interested. Our bodies are temporal anyway. What God wants to do is to make us whole. And to be made whole is to get the impurities out. What is it that's causing these viruses? And what's, what is it that's causing all these different diseases? Satan is out to, the Bible says he's out to steal, to kill, to destroy. He brings spiritual and physical impurities into you if he can do it. He tries to get in there and infiltrate into your life, robbing you of faith, taking your mind off of Christ, getting you away from God's word. You know, one of the things that we have been seeing, and we've talked to pastors all over who tell us the same thing. The COVID thing, they shut down our churches. People got used to staying at home. And now they don't want to come back again. They're comfortable being at home instead of in the church. And that's a dangerous thing. And so many churches today are only got half or less what they used to have. Because people are comfortable. Like one person the other day I talked to, and he said, you know, I think the internet is becoming a curse. And TV is becoming a curse because now people can just sit home and watch and go to church in their house instead. But what they're missing is fellowship. They're missing personal contact with people. You can't walk up to your TV or your computer and look at it and say, would you pray for me? It's not going to do it. But you can come into the house of the Lord. You can come forward. You can say, would you pray for me? We all gather around and we lay our hands on you. If you're sick, we anoint you with oil. Your computer can't anoint you with oil. And we pray in the name of Jesus, your computer can't do that. And I praise God that this telecast is going around the world. But it's no substitute for being in God's house. God says, neglect not the assembling of yourselves together as some do. The Holy Spirit comes in to make you whole. And that is the burning out of all impurities, physical and spiritual. Physical, you know, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of healing. Aren't you glad there is a gift of healing? Oh, I'm so glad. You know, we've been praying, Bob, for your brother. Now, there is some healing that is happening. It's not complete. But that gift of healing that God gives to us, it's not because he deserves to be healed, but we came in Jesus' name. Jared, you've been having healing in your eyes. Hallelujah. 
Aren't you glad there's a gift of healing? Amen. It's better than a cane that you tap on. God is the healer God. And he gives that gift so that it can be a part of the church. Amen. That when we come in and we have a physical need, we can come to a God who loves us, a God who cares about everything in your life, and we can bring them boldly to the throne of grace and find help in time of need. We don't believe in just religion here at this church. Amen. We believe in a personal relationship with a God who is able to do all things. A God who loves you. A God who cares about every aspect of your life and he wants to make you totally whole. Now we, even after we come and we say, God, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Now when he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, he comes with his holiness. And he drives out the sin in your life. This is the greatest evidence when you become holy like he is. Now, just because you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and received that holiness in your life, that does not mean it's going to stay that way forever. That's the beginning. The Apostle Paul in the fifth chapter of Ephesians put it this way, Be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Greek there, when it says be filled, it means be filled. That's an experience in which you ask God to fill you. But then it goes on and says be continually filled from that day on. You know, he does not say go forward at a big... Crusade was a preacher preaching and go forward. A lot of people, everybody's emotion, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and now you're fine until next year when special meetings come again. That does, that's not what it says. We are to come daily before God. It must be a continual thing in our life. God, Satan is hitting me with impurities again. Cleanse my heart. You know, ladies, wouldn't it be nice if once you got your house nice and clean, you've gone all over it with your dust cloth and everything is just nice and clean, that it stayed that way and you never had to worry about it again. But it doesn't work that way, does it? How long until there's dust particles starting to build up again? <laughs> yeah. All it will learn all you gotta do is have a car drive by. Yeah. It comes again. Be being filled. Be being filled. Continual experience. This is the condition of the heart living in the anointing and the power of God's Holy Spirit. This is where the emphasis must be is that we are living in God's cleansing spirit. That's what changes your attitude. That's what changes everything about you. It starts with God, fill me with your spirit. Amen. And Lord, I want you to fill me with not only just an emotional experience, I want to be filled with your holiness. And to do that, Lord, I'm asking you to cleanse out, take away all sin out of my life. Remove all the particles, all the little dust particles that Satan sends in. You know, this coronavirus, they say that thing is so tiny. I've been watching things on, on the internet, you know, about it. Doctors say... That the, the coronavirus is so tiny, we put these masks on, it just goes right through it. It doesn't stop it. It just makes you feel safe while you're getting sick. But it doesn't really do anything, they said. And you know, that's the way 
By the way, the best, the best defense is still Jesus. Amen. Someone asked me, well, have you had the, have you had the vaccine? I said, nope, I've been vaccinated with the power of God. Amen. With the word of the Lord. That's the best thing. Yes, you eat the right things. You, you, you be careful what you're eating, but you, and you get the vitamins and things you need, and your body then has an immune system that will fight it off. If you want to have a really strong spiritual immune system, fill your life with the Holy Spirit. And Satan cannot break you down. Your faith will remain strong when the Word of God fills your heart. You see, the Holy Spirit is not simply just like something you get at, the, at a fair, you know, jump on the ride, and it spins you around, throws you around, and, wow, I just got filled with the Holy Spirit. No. People are doing that and thinking spiritually, no, they got filled because they had a wild experience. But what really will bring the Holy Spirit into your life is to be so desperate for God and for His holiness that you don't seek a thrill, you seek the person of God, the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall dwell in your mortal body. Think of that. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And he promised that to his disciples. He said, go back to Jerusalem. And that is what's going to come upon you. That power, that anointing. That, and that's what gives you the abilities. Is the power of God. And that's what he's still offering today. He is still offering that overcoming power that enables us to be holy, to walk with God. Oh, listen. Jesus wants to give to us that power to go. To receive that anointing, to receive that holiness means to be yielding to the power of God. Yielding to Him. And, uh, you know, going back to Cassandra, when I wrapped my arms around her and I stood to my feet, she quit fighting just like that. Let Jesus pick you up. Rest in His power. And he will carry you through. You can look at the world today and you say, well, my Jesus is bigger. I don't have to worry. And like Lois's mom had a thing on the refrigerator for years. It says something, I can't remember the word for word, but something. Uh, I, tonight I'm going to lay down in my bed and I'm going to go to sleep because Jesus is awake. So I why you know, both of us don't have to be. We'll leave it all up to him. Yeah. Now, I guess the question that I want to bring to you, I'm going to be carrying this further in the days ahead. Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are, are important. And when it comes to, we, we touched us a little bit on the gift of speaking in tongues. And the, the dean of our seminary, this is a man with two earned doctor's degrees, one of the most intelligent men that I've ever known. Also one of the most spiritual men. I'll tell you, he was a true man of God. But he, he told us this, he said, he said, I do not understand I do not understand what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues. He said, I don't understand it. But, he says, I will never fight it because it's in the Bible. Now that is 
That is wisdom. Because you can't understand something, don't throw it out. Pray for understanding. Because God puts it in the Bible for a reason. And what God put in the Bible way back then is still in the Bible today for a reason. We will be talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and they are a rich blessing. But I'll tell you this, the gifts of the Spirit will never glorify God unless the holiness of God dwells in the one who possesses the gift. Remember that. Remember. You need God's Spirit every day of your life. It is not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. We've got a troubled world here today. But we've got a great big God. And this great big God will take you by the hand and he'll lead you. This morning during Sunday school, Cassandra, she can go up and down that stairway pretty good. But she walked up to Grandpa and she took my hand and she led me to the stairway. She wanted me to walk her down the stairway. Because she wanted to see Mom. So she reached up and you know when those little, my little fingers reach up, you know there's no way Grandpa can say no. <laughs> I took her hand and we walked to the stairway. Step by step, we walked. She was not afraid. And she got to the bottom of the stairway. She took months. What God wants you to do, when you can't understand, is take God's hand. He will never turn away. Never. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. That you're here, Lord, to give us victory, to take away our fear, to put faith in our hearts. But you're also here, Lord, to cleanse us of those little itty bitty particles that we don't even realize are beginning to filter into our spirit and rob us of our relationship with you, to rob us of our power against the enemy until we start feeling sick, spiritually sick, and fear begins to build within us. Lord, clean those things out. Replace it all with your Holy Spirit. And when, all, when people look at us, they will see the holiness of God the greatest evidence of all, of your spirit. But we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
thank you today that you are willing to fill us to overflowing if we ask. And Lord, you are willing to drive out all sin from our life, cleansing completely. And Lord, we know that it's so easy to have had an experience once, or even twice, and then become lax and allow the dust particles of habits and sin to creep back in and not even see it. God, we pray in Jesus' name that you would just all of a sudden reveal all those things that have crept in Lord, that we will be so clean, there is no place left where the Holy Spirit cannot be. <coughs> Fill us, Lord, to overflowing, that we may bring glory to the name of Jesus. Break down every habit. Break down, Lord, all those things that have been controlling us that the only thing left in control is the spirit of the living God. Oh, Jesus, we need you. We need all of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Lord, like may we be, like John the Baptist who said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Lord, fill us completely. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God from the desire, we'll be happy to pray with you. God bless.